I have apparently been dating my best friend for an entire year but didn't know until today. I, 18 female, have known him, 19 male, for 5 years, different classes and courses but same friend group. Over time, he has genuinely become one of the best people I know, and it's only getting better every day. I can't lie and say he's not my type, nerdy, charming, sweet, funny, flirty, with the right amount of awkward. He comes to pick me up from class. He plays hockey without being a jerk to the skaters. And most importantly, he gets treats for my cat. Multiple strangers have mistaken us for a couple, even close people like our friends, professors, and worst of all, my family. He's kind of perfect, but I've never even thought of putting the moves on him, he's never shown romantic interest in me, we're friends, nothing more. Or that's what I thought. Today, he was spending the afternoon at my dorm, something he started about a year now. We're laying on my bed mindlessly watching Sonic cartoons when he says, verbatim, so, baby, where do you want to go this Friday? Matter of fact, this is the first time I've been called baby by him, so that kinda shocked me. Instead of asking why, I froze and was just like, what's happening Friday? He turns to me and kisses me, again, first time thing with us, hugs my waist and says, our one year anniversary, idiot. I'm making reservations. At this point, I'm frozen. I genuinely don't know what to say. I'm gobsmacked. The dude I thought was my best friend, who never even showed interest in the dating thing, is under the idea that we've been dating for a whole year. I'm silent while he continues hugging me and scrolling on his phone, racking my brain thinking about what to tell him when his phone starts ringing. It's his mom, which he puts on speaker and she deadass goes hi. Are you still with your girlfriend? Oh, so now his mom thinks we're dating too? He tells her yes, asks why she called. She asks for his help with private stuff I will not divulge here, he turns to me and goes sorry, I'll be back in a bit, sweetheart. I just nodded. I was just like alright, see you in a bit. No questions, no screaming, just acceptance. He gets up to put on his sneakers and leans down to kiss me again, which I just accept at this point. It's a nice kiss besides the fact that my mind is somewhere else. He leaves and I get a text from his coach, tell, boyfriend's name, to come tomorrow at 7pm, he'll only listen if it's you. The hell you mean only me? You're the responsible adult task with training these hockey players, why do you depend on me bringing him to you? But that led me to a rabbit hole of finding out who knows we're dating. Apparently, the majority of the people I talk to think we're dating, or if I'm being correct here, know we're dating and just, have never mentioned it to me. I don't think it's a prank solely on the fact that his mom called me his girlfriend. They don't have the closest relationship. She is a very traditional, conservative and religious Korean woman. Always serious and does not play around. When she realized early on that her son did not agree with many of her opinions, she stopped caring for him to the fullest, only keeping it civil for the rest of the family and friends. There's nothing he could have done to have her go along with something like this, especially when she wants him to marry young with a nice Korean girl, which I'm not. Also, he just does not seem like the guy to play with people like this. He might be dumb and oblivious, but not horrible. I don't know what to do now, I mean, he's a great guy don't get me wrong, and if the last five years are anything to go by, he would be, is, a great boyfriend, maybe even in the future a husband. But, I've never looked at him that way, so I can't say I love him. When this occurred, it was like the glass shattered and I saw how differently he looked at me, how he talked and acted, stuff that never changed since the beginning but for some reason I've never noticed. I can't sit here and pretend I love him like that, I wasn't thinking about him in that sense all this time. But, on the other side, I don't want to hurt him. He clearly thinks we've been together for that long so he has to have strong feelings for me, and I don't want to step on them and scar him like that. I can't just keep dating him though, something that I've apparently been doing for a year. I could learn to love him eventually, it wouldn't take much to be honest, but it wouldn't be fair to him or me. In my defense, who dates someone and just does not ask them about it. If the roles were reversed and a year ago something happened where I was like hell, I love him, this was probably a date, we're probably dating right now. I would have confirmed with him or at the very least said something for the following year, not only at the one year mark. I just don't know what to do. I'm scared and angry, disappointed in myself for not recognizing the situation sooner. Feel like I'm stuck between the sword and the wall. Last thing I want is to hurt him, but I also don't want to lie to him. How should I go on about this with him? Edit to add, I've sent a text for us to meet up and I somewhat already know what I'm gonna say to him. Update, well, turns out he's just dumb and sad. Or maybe crazy and psychotic. I did give him way too much benefit of the doubt. I read a lot of comments and messages that were sent to me privately on what I should do. Big thank you to everyone, majority of you were nice and helpful. Also big sorry for the sweet lady wishing me a happy future marriage, not happening soon. I brought it up to my psychiatrist, showed her the Reddit post I made, a few of the messages I've received and she basically had the attitude of hey, remember that great guy, well he's a piece of crap now, so let's learn about moving on and not reminiscing on a broken friendship, which I think is the best way to go in about this. Now, to be honest I don't remember much because I wanted to cry from the moment he started talking. Also I was quiet and only spoke very little because I did not want to make a bigger scene than it already was. I just let him talk for a few hours and then dipped. 
Towards the end, he was shouting and unpredictable, people were looking and I just wanted to go home. I decided that we should meet up in a public space. Before his practice, I sent him a text and asked if he wanted to meet up at a coffee shop we both know. He called, said yes and said, you sound serious, should I be worried? To which I said honestly, yes, you should. He told me to stop joking and then went on to his practice. Fast forward a couple hours, I'm sitting there and he comes in, sits in front of me and thanks me for the food I ordered for him. We start eating. I'm a nervous wreck and he realizes, which led to him asking, are you really okay? You didn't seem good a while ago, and from what you said, I'm actually worried now. So I lay it out on him. I ask him why he thinks we're dating, why does everyone else as well and what led to him thinking that. Now, he's just quiet and I'm just looking at him not say anything. Stuff after this is a bit fuzzy because I just wanted to cry. This next crap came very out of the blue for me as well, it's just weird looking back on it. He said something like I didn't really think we could actually date if I asked you up front, to which I said that's how relationships usually work though, you ask. To which led him on a tangent about women in general. Opinions that he shared with me and said to my eyes with no regret. What I saw in front of me was no longer my best friend of five years, it was a boy who grew up to be a man and have a very damaging idea of women. Stuff that I could assign to immaturity, but he had nicer things to say when he was 14 than what he told me now. I just interrupted him and asked what led him to think about women this way, since he never led his family, most predominantly his mother, to be honest I don't think even the most conservative women in the world would say what he said, but his mother still has some not so nice beliefs about women, influence him into these antiquated ideas. He was quiet for a while and that did give me some pity, until he opened that mouth of his again, you know, there's these podcasts. That let me know everything I needed to. Oh so you're a Tate fanboy now? He starts arguing and yelling that it's not him but that they know what's right and wrong, how things should be and to be honest, I'm not really listening to him at this point, I just want to get out of there and cry. I'm listening, but nothing is registering. Some of the milder things he started yelling are about women and our relationship with food and how we should have a limited amount, how we're so vulnerable and emotional, ready to blame men for everything and how we start yelling at every minute inconvenience, which is funny in hindsight, how menstrual stuff was a hoax and that I was no doubt lying when I couldn't walk for my period pains because I wanted his attention, and that no girl can possibly feel a greater pain than a man. He also said that when we were talking about his course, something to do with car parts, it was not cute and sweet of me, let alone women in general, to act dumb and pretend I'm clueless, because that does not make me more appealing, I genuinely don't freaking know how a car works, my bad. I tell him that if this is all a big joke, it's not funny. He interrupts me and talks about how he listens to these men but doesn't tell anyone because he knows me and our friends wouldn't agree, tells me I'm not a perfect woman, whatever that means, but that he would still like to date me but couldn't tell me because I'd say no and ruin his fantasy. I'm crying at this point and people are noticing, so I just want to get out of there immediately. I tell him, not verbatim, but along the lines, you're so stupid, name. You genuinely could have dated me, if only you had asked. You could have had everything but you started listening to opinions of guys who have nothing. How sad can you be to pull a stunt like this instead of asking like a normal person? He starts yelling that I'm wrong and they know what is right, starting a whole rant that I don't have the strength to listen to. I stand up, start walking and he grabs my arm. More people are staring. I tell him to let go and he only does when I threaten to call the police. I left telling him to never speak to me again. I am now home. I've blocked him on everything and told some friends what happened. They were all shocked by how he acted and what he said. One guy did tell me, he was always easy to influence though. I asked why they thought we were dating and they told me it was how we acted like a couple, I guess that one is on me, combined with the fact that he told them yes when they asked and since the behavior checked out, they just never thought to talk about it with me. I'm not responding to any of them right now. To be honest, I'm moving cities in a few months with my family. I used to cry about it nonstop because I'd have to leave all my friends here, including him and that was the last thing I wanted. Now, I'm kinda glad I don't have to worry about bumping into him. I just feel distraught, like, that was a nice friendship, it was a pillar of my childhood and now it's just gone. He said and did some nasty things, even if it was in the span of a few hours. If up until moving he comes up to me personally or tries to pick me up from class, I'll repeat that I do not want him in my life anymore. If push comes to shove, I'll call the police, not that I think he'd do anything though. I'm also sharing my location with both my older brother and father, yes it might be a bit delusional and not needed, but you never know. He was a great guy and we did have a good friendship up until he decided to view women as objects and date one without asking because he deserves it. I just can't stop crying. I really thought I knew him, and for him to be able to spew those words and opinions at me like that, stuff he's always been against from what I remember, it was shocking. It's only been a few hours but it's already weird not having that constant text or call happening. I feel like it's kinda empty but I don't want someone like that next to me. The worst for me is that I see no change. He has no sisters and his mother does somewhat think that way as well, and so does his father. Maybe coach could help, but I don't know. I just feel betrayed I guess. It feels stupid to say but it's true. I mean, I get men like this every single day, every girl does. 
It goes from professors who know me to drivers who are seeing me for the first time. Comments vary from just telling me I'm pretty to more gruesome stuff, I'm used to it. I just never expected it to be someone so close to me, that I trusted. I don't know when he started thinking like this but now it has me feeling all gross and dirty. If he thinks like this about me and never said it, I don't even want to know what he thinks about our mutual trans friend, what his opinions are actually like when he's always been nice and respectful to her. It does help me chuckle a bit that some of the things he said were just so textbook misogyny that it seems he learned them on a Joker Sigma Instagram account. That is so stupid it's kinda hilarious if you omit the part where he said essay is not a real problem. So, that is that. I thought I had a nice friend by my side, but guess not. Never trust a guy, even if you grew up with him, they'll disappoint you eventually. Bye.